Grade 10 learners and welcome back to another video with me, Miss Martins. If you haven't subscribed for maths and physics videos, subscribe now. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the introduction to trigonometry and we'll be focusing on the basic trig ratios. We'll be looking at sin or sine, cos or cosine and tan or tangents. I'll also show you how to write the basic trig ratios for an angle. So for example, I'll show you how to write sin of an angle, what that's equal to, how to find it using a right angle triangle. So let's jump right in. Now trigonometry is a very important section that you'll learn in maths, you'll learn it in grade 10 and carry it through to grade 12. And it's a really cool section. We work in triangles, trigonometry, and it has a lot of applications in real life. We can use it in engineering, architecture, navigation, surveying. So it has a lot of applications. So please never ask your teachers, ma'am, where am I gonna use this in real life? I promise you, you will use trigonometry. Now, in grade 10, we focus on doing trigonometry in right angled triangles, only right angled triangles. And you know what right tri angle triangles are. Right angle triangles have a right angle. So we will indicate on the triangle, in most cases, that it is a right angle triangle. Just what do you know about the name of AC? What is the name of AC? AC is the longer side of the right angle triangle. It is opposite the 90 degrees and it is called the hypotenuse. That's very important that you remember that from grade nine. So we work in right angle triangles. We're going to be working with the sides of the triangles and the angles within the triangle. So trigonometry is either about finding missing angles or missing sides. And again, working in triangles. Let's take a look at this 90 degree or right angle triangle on the screen, triangle A, B, C. Which side in this triangle is the hypotenuse? The hypotenuse is AC. It's opposite the 90 degree. It will always the opposite the 90 degree, that is the hypotenuse. Now, let's look at angle A. Angle A is this angle over here. I'm going to call it angle A, but we could label this angle anything. We could call it theta, for example. So let's refer to angle A as theta. Which side in the triangle is opposite angle A? Now think of opposite like this. If you have to take a line from directly from that angle, pointing it across the, the triangle like that, this side that it points to, that is the opposite side. It's basically the side that angle A is looking at. You can also, also think of it as the side that angle A isn't touching. You can see that angle A is touching the hypotenuse and it's touching this side over here but it's not touching this side here at the bottom. That's because it is opposite angle A. So this relative to angle A is the opposite side. This is opposite angle A. So at the moment, we're speaking about angle A or theta, doesn't really matter. We've got the hypotenuse of the triangle. This is the opposite side. This side over here is called the adjacent side. Now, adjacent the word adjacent means next to and what this means is that a b the side a b is next to it's adjacent to angle a right what if i had to erase all of this and now we have to focus on angle c would you be able to name the sides of the triangle for me so let's erase all of this let's look at angle c okay we still got our right angle triangle over here we're looking at angle c let's call that theta this is still the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse will always stay the hypotenuse. It's always opposite the 90 degree angle, like that. Relative to angle C, this side is now the opposite. Why? Because we're talking about angle C and AB is opposite angle C. And if that side's the, hypoten the opposite, sorry, this side is adjacent to angle C. It's very important to understand how to identify the hypotenuse, the opposite side, and the adjacent side, because these sides, these names, these appear in our different trig ratios, which we're going to take a look at now. Right, let's have a look at those trig ratios. These are the three basic trig ratios. You will be using this only in a right angle triangle. As I mentioned in grade 10, we will be working in right angle triangles. We have sin. 
or sign. Okay, sin shortened for sign. And the sin of an angle, sine of an angle, is equal to the opposite side. So the side opposite that angle over the hypotenuse. Then we've got cos. Cos of an angle is equal to the adjacent side. Okay, adjacent to that angle divided by the hypotenuse or over the hypotenuse. Then we've got tan. Tan is opposite over adjacent. So remember, when we say opposite, we mean the side opposite this angle. And when we say adjacent, we mean the side adjacent to this angle. Now, how I remember the different trig ratios is so, ka, to, wa. So what this means is sin or sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cos, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse and tan is opposite over adjacent. It doesn't matter how you remember the trig ratios as long as you have a way of remembering that if I ask you for cos of an angle, we must look for the adjacent side over the hypotenuse side. You can't get this confused. Another really cool thing that I saw online was this basically a little way to remember opposites over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, and so on. If you look at the right angle triangle here, we've created an S. And if I'm looking for sin of this angle or sine of this angle over here, we must use the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So it involves these two sides. And you can see the S touches those two sides. This might not be helpful, but I thought it was a really cool thing to see. Then we've got cos. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So if you're looking for cos of this angle, you're looking for the adjacent side, which is this one, and the hypotenuse, which is this one. Remember, we won't use this side because this is opposite, and cos does not want opposite. And then we've got tan, which is opposite. So that's the opposite over adjacent. Here's the adjacent. Remember, in this case, for tan, we ignore the hypotenuse because tan doesn't care about the hypotenuse. So if you look at this picture, this side over here is the hypotenuse. We don't care about it because we're doing tan. Let's have a look at an example. So in my example, I've got triangle A, B, C. Now, I want you to answer the following questions for me. I want you to write down the value of sin theta. Then I want you to write down the value of sin Beta, these are different angles. So theta is this angle over here. Beta is this angle over here. And then I want you to write down the value of cos theta. And let's do tan beta. Try it yourself, but let me help you if you can't do it. So sin theta, number one. Sin theta. This question is not asking you to find the value of theta or to solve for the angle. It's asking you to write down the ratio of sin of theta. So what is the ratio equal to? What is this fraction equal to? What is the value of sin theta? Now, how do you do this? You look for theta on your diagram. It's over here. Then you ask yourself, sin is what? You need to remember, so... Ka toa. So sin is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse. You don't need to write that first. I'm just doing that to help you out. Opposite over hypotenuse. What is opposite theta? Look at theta. What is it looking at? Opposite theta is 5. What is the hypotenuse of the triangle? It's 13. Therefore, your answer is 5 over 13. Always simplify that fraction. Let's do sin. Beta. Again, sin, now we're not doing theta, we're doing beta, which is the other angle. It's this angle over here, angle A basically. Sin again is opposite over hypotenuse. But now we're looking at beta, not theta. So what is opposite beta? Opposite beta is 12 centimeters. The hypotenuse of the triangle is 13. That's your answer. Our next question is asking for cos. Of theta. Now, cos, look at your Sokotoa, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. We've already established that the hypotenuse in this triangle is 13. 
So it's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. The hypotenuse we know is 13. But how do I find the adjacent? Look for theta. The adjacent side is the side next to. So here's theta. Okay. Remember the opposite side of theta. Opposite theta is this side. Opposite. So adjacent would be next to. It would be this side. So cos of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent or next to theta is this side over here. 12 over 13. Last but not least, tan of beta. Now remember, tan has nothing to do with hypotenuse. Tan is opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. So look at beta. Here's beta over here. What is opposite beta? Opposite beta is 12. What is adjacent or next to beta? This one over here. 5. So it's 12 over 5. Now, you might say, but ma'am, 13 is also next to beta. That's next to beta and that's next to beta. But 13 is the hypotenuse. That's its name. It's a hypotenuse. It can't be the adjacent. So next to beta or adjacent to beta is 5. So it's opposite over adjacent, 12 over 5. Always make sure you simplify it, which it is. Let's take a look at this example. Let's see if you can do it. So pause the screen and attempt it if you'd like. But I'm going to do it right now with you if you don't want to do it alone. So it says determine sin of the angle Z, which is obviously this angle over here, and then tan of the angle Y, which is this angle over here. Let's start with sin of Z or sine of Z. Now, you know that sin or sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. You need to learn that. It's so... Katoa. So Katoa. You need to learn that. Sin of Z. Here's Z. Okay, we're going to ignore Y for now. We don't care about Y for now. We care about Z. Sin is opposite. So what is opposite Z? Let's see. Opposite Z, what is it looking at? Is 9 centimeters. The hypotenuse of this triangle, opposite the 90, is the 90. Opposite the 90 is 15. So sin of Z is 9 over 15. Please don't move on with your life at this point. You must always simplify as far as you can. So this is not simplified to its furthest extent. How do we simplify further? Let's divide top and bottom by 3. 3 goes into 9, 3 times. 3 goes into 15, 5 times. Now I have simplified it as far as I can. That's my answer. Sin of z is equal to 3 over 5. Now, we need to do tan of y. But I hope you can see an issue. Maybe you don't see an issue yet. That's okay. Tan of angle y. Here's angle y. Remember tan, here's tan. Toa. Tan is opposite over adjacent. What is opposite y? We don't know what that is. How can we go on with the sum? We don't know what that is. We need opposites. We don't know what opposite is. How do I find the length of a missing side in a 90 degree triangle, in a right angle triangle, when I have the other two sides. Look at it. It's a 90 degree triangle. Yes. I have the two other lengths. Yes. How do I find the third length? Pythagoras. You need to do Pythagoras first in order to find the length of XZ. Then you can actually go and do your trig ratio. So you have to do Pythagoras first. So I'm looking for X. Z, that is equal to my hypotenuse squared minus my short side squared. You need to know how to do Pythagoras properly. Pythagoras, remember to always write your reason. If you don't write your reason, you might lose a mark. Pythagoras, the opposite of square, square root. You square root 15 squared minus 9 squared. How I teach my learners is if we're looking for the hypotenuse, then we add the other two sides and square everything. But we're not looking for the hypotenuse. We have the hypotenuse. We're looking for a short side. So we need to minus, right? So if you do that on your calculator, you should get XZ as being equal to 12 centimeters. Great. Now I've found the third side over here. This is 12 centimeters and I can continue on with my trig. So tan, tan of Y is opposite 
which is now 12. Great, we know what that is. We found that using Pythagoras over opposite over adjacent. What is adjacent to y? What is next to y? I hope you're not saying 15 because 15 is the hypotenuse, so that doesn't count. So the adjacent side is 9. That is not in its simplest form at all. You can simplify that further. 3 goes into 12 four times. 3 goes into 9 three times. Always make sure you simplify as far as possible. I hope this video has been helpful. Let me know in the comments what you want to see next. Can't wait to see you in another video. Bye, everybody.